By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have a very special episode for you. We have the finals of the Raging Bull series. And on the left of your screen, you see Lucas Baum. And he's playing with what I've called Pendle Weenie. It's a weenie deck, red green and a little bit of black and he is playing against Juan Lopez and he's from Spain and he is playing with a pink weenie deck exactly you've heard it correctly two weenie decks in the final so what does that mean for the gameplay probably a lot of aggressive quick decks playing against each other now before we are going to the actual match i am first going to do a little deck tech of both of these decks i've got deck pictures and i'll just quickly go through them with you now if you want to go straight to the games no worries check the description below there you will find a timestamp click on the timestamp and it'll take you straight to game number one as for now we are going to start by looking at the deck of lucas baum pendle weenie so here we see the deck of Lucas Baum that I've actually called Pendle Weenie and the reason for that is the three Pendle Havens. So they're key in this deck. There are a lot of one ones in this deck. We've got the Dragonfly, we've got the Wiley Wolf, we've got the Script Sprites, you know, we've got even got Kurt Ape who will probably become a 2-3 quite quickly in this deck, but still it's a 1-1 one -one when there's no forest into play. We've got Scavenger Folk and we've got four Lunar Elves. So there's so many targets here for that Pendle Haven to give plus one, plus two. And the nice thing is he can use his Pendle Haven to make them two, three, and then he can use his Wailuli to make those creatures three, four. So that is really nice synergy. And he's also playing, there are just two creatures that don't have a base power and toughness of one, one, actually one creature, but two creatures in his deck, two copies of Argovian Pixies. So one green and one, the creature from Antiquities that um, that is fantastic against artifacts because all the damage it takes from artifacts is reduced to zero. So it's just a fantastic blocker when you have to deal with those annoying Mishra's factories. Talking about Mishra's factories, he is playing them himself as well. And in his entire deck main board, he only plays with one black card. That is the Mind Twist. It's a brutal card though, so I think it's a useful inclusion. And uh, in the sideboard, he's playing with three terrors as well. That's part of his black package then the nice thing here is that he's added red to the mix and red means um, that he has direct damage so we see lightning bolt chain lightning and also one copy of disintegrate in this deck uh, furthermore we see uh, sylvan library two copies of that probably to draw into new cards when he's running out of fuel interesting in this deck actually is he's not playing with wheel of fortune because my first instinct would be put a wheel of fortune in there because you've got a lot of cheap spells and cheap creatures so you're probably going to run out of cards quickly and you can restock with the wheel of fortune of course the downside of the wheel of fortune is you're giving your opponent seven fresh cards as well so perhaps that's the reason why he's not playing with it. So it might be interesting, Lucas, if you're listening to this, to let us know what your thoughts are on Wheel of Fortune and why you did or, well, actually why you didn't include Wheel of Fortune uh, in your deck, as I'm sure you've play tested this. Um, I'm really a big fan here of the Ice Storms as well. I think Ice Storm in combination with Lanor Elf is great because it allows you to play a turn two Ice Storm and it really... Uh, it gives you a head start of the game. Sometimes it can it can kind of work as a time walk, actually an early ice storm. And uh, late game ice storms are valuable as well just because of the fact that there are so many special lands in old school magic. You just need land removal. You need your strip mine, you need your chaos orb, but I think besides those two, you need at least two other ways to deal with lands in the Swedish format. So I think three ice storms is a very logical inclusion. Um, this is the deck of Lucas Baum and we've seen it in the semifinals and now we're going to look at the deck Pink Weenie from Juan Lopez. And here we see the deck of Juan Lopez Buzon and uh, it is a Pink Weenie deck and we've seen it in action before here on the channel. I believe it was the quarterfinals where we saw this deck uh, as well. Now if we take a look at this deck, what we notice, and I've, I've discussed it before, but I'm just going to mention it one more time. Uh, what we notice is here is choice for Iron Claw Orc at that two slot. That's something you don't see often. He's already proven that the Iron Claw Orc can be quite effective. I mean, he's reached the finals. That's enough proof that this is a good choice over the White Knight. One red and one is easier to cast than the double white of the White Knight. And we saw the the we see the four gargoyles, granite gargoyles. I think it's it's just it's a beautiful creature. Um, and then also we see the Blood Moons. Now, looking at this specific matchup, 
Um, you could say the Blood Moons are probably not going to be very valuable because he's facing a deck that's weenie, doesn't need a lot of uh, uh, mana, that's playing with only two colors. But there's a big but here because, remember, um, his opponent is relying heavily on the Pendlehavens. So I think in this matchup, uh, the Blood Moons can, can play a really, really big role. Now, again, I think the uh, Black Vices are not going to play a big role because you're playing against a weenie deck that's probably going to quickly play out his hand. Now, I said that before and then I was wrong and the Black Vice turned out to play a crucial role and that was in the quarterfinals where we saw this pink weenie deck as well. So, I could be absolutely wrong again. Maybe there could be a scenario where Juan plays his Blood Moon and uh, just really locks Lucas's play up. Lucas cannot find what he needs. Remember, he is playing with red and with green, so I don't think he has really an answer before sideboarding against Blood Moon. So, Blood Moon in combination with the Black Vice could work. So, I'm really curious to see um, if Juan can actually pull that off. Um, I think it's going to be a game that is going to be really quick. Both players are playing with Chains and, and Lightning Bolts, and I think for both players, these are going to be very valuable cards, not just for direct damage, on the opponent but also to remove each other's creatures remember they're all playing with small creatures so it's really easy to uh, use a chain or a lightning bolt to actually kill some of the key creatures of the opponent um, talking about removal i do think juan has a little bit more removal than lucas because uh, juan also has access to swords to plowsiers now remember lucas has his terrors on his in his sideboard so maybe he's going to board that in and if we look at the sideboard of juan i don't see a lot of useful cards in the sideboard of Juan, to be honest. But hey, I could be wrong here. I'm uh, really looking forward to see how this is going to work out. Two very aggressive decks going face to face here in the finals of the Raging Bull series. Let's go to the finals. Game number one. And we've got Lucas Baum sitting on the left with his Pendle Weenie deck. And we've got Juan Lopez sitting on the right with his pink Weenie deck. Let's see who is on the player. It looks like it's Lucas on the play. Turn one, Lunaware Elf. That is a great start for Lucas here. Will we see a turn two? Uh, Ice Storm, that's of course one of the questions here. Let's see what Juan can do. And there is a good start for him as well with his Savannah Lines turn one. Nice to see these basic lands. And there's another basic forest into, let's see, there's a Script Sprites and another Lunaware Elves here for Lucas Baum. So a lot of pressure here and actually it looks like it's an argovian pixies there from lucas brown another script price and there we see the iron claw orcs from juan that two two creature that has been doing good work this entire tournament and there's a strip mine on the red mana of juan so that could be problematic and he's actually showing that iron claw orc now and uh i mean trust me that that card I'm happy I already own a playset because that's definitely going to spike after this tournament. There is an attack from the Argovian Pixies. Juan is deciding to trade here for his Savannah Lions. And there is a Dragonfly from Lucas, a 1-1 Flyer. There's an attack here. And Lucas is taking the damage, dropping to 18. And there is Juan playing another Iron Claw Orc. And... Uh, it looks like there's some Iron Claw Orc pressure here from Juan early on. And let's see what Lucas can do here. Of course, he has that Dragonfly. And I think he really wants to draw into a Pendlehaven here. At least he's dealing one damage to Juan right now. Juan having four cards in hand, taking turn here. And attacking with both, of course, is this four more damage for Lucas. Is he going to drop to 14? I think he really doesn't want to take the damage. On the other hand, he really wants to wait until he has a Pendlehaven. Remember, with one Pendlehaven, he can block those Iron Claw Orcs. Ooh, and this is a good play here from Juan. There is the, ooh, but a Disintegrate. Granite Gargoyle, I wanted to say, but it's already gone. It's out of the game here. And there's an attack for three. That means Juan's going to drop here to 16. And But he can also swing in now for four. So uh, let's see what he does. He plays a strip mine on the dual end there of Lucas and attacks for four. I think it's a bad lance. Attacks for four here. Lucas is going to drop to 10. He really needs a Pendlehaven. And there is a Scripps Rites. 
is he going to jump with the script sprites? That's the question you really, yeah, that's what he does. I think it's a good decision because remember, you're playing against Juan who's got chain lightnings, lightning bolts and whatnot in his deck. And he's attacking and bringing Juan to 10 here, playing another script sprites. There is a disenchant on that Mox Emerald. And an attack for four, jumping with the scripts. That means he's going down two. He's going to, I believe, to eight. Because it looks like Juan's put him on nine, but I believe he's on eight right now. And Juan's also dropping to eight. Or sorry, he's on six, actually. And he's now going to drop to four. And Juan is on eight. And there is a Kurt Ape, and that is a two, three creature. And that is bad news for Juan, because that two, three is big enough to block the Iron Claw Orc. Interesting here, and I think a very good decision. Yes, there's a Lightning Bolt on the Kurt Ape. A very good decision from Lucas to keep that uh, Lanor Elves at home in case that the Lightning Bolt happened. That means he can jump. He's on two. There's another Kurt Ape. Needs to keep his Dragonfly on tap now. And if Juan can find a Chain or a Lightning Bolt, this game is over. And no, a Soul Ring. And oh wow, City in a bottle brings Juan the win here because it kills the Kurt Ape. Whew! This was a very quick game. This is what you can expect with two of these aggro decks playing against each other. But it was exciting. Really a race to the finish line. And that City in a bottle meant the victory here for Juan. And um, here you could see kind of the downside of the Pendle Weenie deck. He really needs to find Pendle Havens and... From that perspective, it might be interesting to include actually a Demonic Tutor just to look for that Pendle Haven. Very interesting first game here. Let's uh, give this player some time to sideboard and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two is about to begin here. Both players are still kind of shuffling up. And uh, we saw in that first game how important Pendle Haven is for Lucas. If he cannot find it, it is difficult. And we also saw again the power. Again, I'm saying again, because these Iron Claw Orcs, they keep surprising me. We saw the power of the Iron Claw Orcs. And uh, we see Juan here shuffling up. Same thing can be set for, uh, for Lucas. And I mean, it was a very close first game. Lucas almost won. That single City in a Bottle, copy of City in a Bottle, Juan, Juan's deck is what gave him the victory. So this is far from over. I think both players still have a very good chance of winning these finals. Of course, Lucas is now on the play, which gives him some advantage, but he has to win as well because he's uh, down one game. If Juan can win this one, he is the Raging Bull champion. So he's only one game away. He's on match point, as they say. And both players drawing their first seven. And it's up to Lucas now to say if he's going to keep. And then Juan can say if he wants to keep. So we're waiting for that right now. Lucas looking at his hand. It looks like he's going to keep. Let's see what Juan's going to do. Going through his hand a few times here. And he's actually taking a mulligan. Which, of course, is always good news when you're the opponent. And like I said, Juan is just one game away, one game away from victory here. And uh, Lucas must feel the pressure right now. He needs to win this if he wants to win the tournament. And Juan is looking at his hand. Is he going to keep it? Then he needs to put one card on the bottom of the library. And yes, he is. So that means he's going to start with six. And there we see Lucas is off. Basic forced into a Lanawer, but a chain lightning on the Lanawer elves. And there is a Pendlehaven into an Argovian Pixies. And let's see what Juan can do here. Tapping a white. Will we see a Savannah Lions? Actually tapping red too, maybe? Yes, Iron Claw Orcs. Now remember, Iron Claw Orcs cannot block a creature with power greater than one. So it cannot block the Argovian Pixies. And we also see a Maze of If here from Lucas and a Dragonfly. And there is a Savannah Lions. That means that attacking with the Iron Claw is pretty useless because of that uh, Maze of If. And there we see a... Um, uh, swords to plowsiers. <laughs> I needed the moment to think here on the dragonfly and also uh, a strip mine here on the red source of Juan. And Juan's going to drop here to 16 after taking another two from the Argovian Pixies and playing a dragonfly here. And now there is an attack. Is there an attack? Well, there is no attack. No, there's no attack. But there is a mountain here from Juan. So Juan deciding to keep his uh, Savannah Lines at bay to possibly block the Argovian Pixies. 
There we see the attack with the Dragonfly pumped by the Pendlehaven means Juan's going to drop to 14 and there we see another Swords that means that Lucas is up to 22 but again losing a Flyer here. And Juan only has two cards in hand left and attacking with the Argovian Pixies. Look at that giant grove. That means that Juan's losing the Savannah but the Argovian Pixies lives to fight another day. And what can Juan do here? He is under pressure. He's on 14, only having that Iron Claw Orc. Looking at that. Uh, ooh, there's a chain on the Argovian Pixies. I wanted to say he's looking uh, at that uh, Mace of If. And Lucas is sending the Chain Lightning back actually to Juan. Juan dropping to 11 here. And I think Juan really needs. There is a Lightning Bolt on the Scavenger Folk. I think what Juan really needs here is a Blood Moon to deal with all those special lands on the side of Lucas, especially with the Maze of If. And there he's attacking with the Pendlehaven, dealing two more damage. And it looks like Juan's down to nine life here. So it's not looking great here for Juan, and he's using a Lightning Bolt on one of the creatures. That means he's going down to seven here. So Lightning Bolt on the Flyer again. And he's dropping to seven. And now we can also see the weak side of Iron Claw Orc because he cannot use it as a blocker. So he has to play his chain. And Lucas is sending the chain back. That means Juan's dropping to four measly life here. And still no answer for that maze of if. We see Disenchant on the Sylvan. I think that's very important because Lucas is on a high life total. But things are not looking great for Juan here. He's on four playing against a deck with Chain and Lightning Bolts and a single Disintegrate here. And there we see a... Ooh, is this the Mind Twist? No, it's a Terror, it seems like. And there's a Granite Gargoyle that's being terrored by Lucas. So Terror came in from the sideboard. Very good choice from Lucas. And Juan is on one life. And there's another Lightning Bolt. Finishing the job, it seems. Can he still survive? He's making this into a 2-2, making it into a 3-3. Probably going to play <laughs> gonna play his swords. That means that he lives to fight another day. He's still on one life. Hanging in here on a threat here in game number two. But remember, if Juan can win this one, he needs a miracle. And there's a disenchant. He's staying alive. Script sprites. Can Juan find an answer for the script sprites? He needs to find it now. As you can see, I've slowed it down. There is a Spirit Link, but that's not going to be enough because the way Spirit Link works, if he attacks, Juan will first take the damage and then gain the life. It doesn't work like Life Link. That's it. That means it's 1-1 one, one here. And actually, that's not it because we're going for a game number three. And I'm very excited because, again, man, this was an exciting match. Even though I have to admit, Juan was uh, with his back against the wall this entire game. He, I, I think that Maze of If played a huge role. Because of that Maze, he couldn't swing in with his Iron Claw Orc. And, and, and you couldn't have the situation where both of the players were racing. It was just Juan trying to stop Lucas and not both players attacking like we saw in game number one. So interesting, both players going through their sideboards again, deciding what to board in, what to board out, and we'll catch back up with them in the final, final, final game of the finals of the Raging Bull series, game number three. Game number three here of the finals of the Raging Bull series between Pendle Weenie, piloted by Lucas Baum from Germany, against Juan Lopez Busson, from Spain who's playing with Pink Weenie and as we could see in both of these games it is exciting. I've decided not to speed up this game number three because this is the final game and uh, both players play fairly quickly it seems so I thought you know it's a good idea to really take our time here for this last game from the Raging Bull series and what a great tournament it was organized by Richard from the theragingbullseries.com so make sure to check out his website if you want to go through all the decks again and if you want to read all the reports. And there we see Juan opening up here. I guess he's a slight favorite being on the play. He's starting here with a basic mountain. Both players are keeping their hand it seems. And there we see a City of Brass into a Kurt Ape. Now if Juan could now find his City in a Bottle turn 2, I guess he doesn't have it because he's playing a Lightning Bolt on the Ape. And let's see what else is he going to do here. 
and drawing into a Mishra's factory, which is actually pretty good. It means pressure. Can he also play an Iron Claw Orc? No, he cannot. And there's a Pendlehaven into a Lanawer Elves passing turn here. And he's asking about his cards. I believe I see five cards in hand. That's always kind of tricky when you're playing online, by the way. And uh, there's a chain again. And this is interesting. Juan has really chosen the tactic of, you know what, I'm going to use my chains and bolts on his creatures first. And then dealing damage later. Attacking here with his factory, playing another factory. So that means he's able to deal two damage. And I believe, exactly, I believe Lucas should be on 18 here. Of course, he's also taking damage every once in a while from his own City of Brass. And there was a quick lightning bolt on that Mishra's factory, by the way. And that's never great when that happens, because you don't on only lose a creature, but you also lose a land here. And Lucas Baum playing a Lanawer Elves and an Argovian Pixies. That's a pretty good turn for him. And let's see if Juan can find some white mana, because he's kind of stuck on that. He's stuck on land, playing an Iron Claw Orc. Now, Iron Claw Orc cannot block any creatures with power greater than one. And there is a Basic Plains playing a Swords to Plowsteers on the Argovian Pixies. And I'm sure this is kind of a difficult choice for him, because the Lanawer Elves can be pumped up by that Pendlehaven. It's there in the middle on the side of Lucas Baum, so he can give his uh, Lanawer Elves plus one, plus two. And both players are still pretty high up in their life totals. 19 against 20 here. Lucas on 19, Juan on 20 still. Only two cards in hand for Juan. And it looks like only two cards in hand for Lucas here. And he's going to attack with his Mishra's Factory for 2-2. Is he also going to swing in with his Lanawer Elves? And he is. So he's attacking for 4 here. That means Juan's going to drop to 16. But he is giving the opening now for Juan to attack with his Iron Claw Orc next turn. If he wants to. And there's still a City of Brass open on the side of Lucas. So the question is also for Juan. Is he going to animate his Mishra's Factory? I'm sure he's first going to draw a card and check his hand before he decides here. Let's see what he's going to do. Playing another Plains. Having enough lands. That's a good thing. So deciding to animate, and I think when you have enough lands, it's easier to animate the factory, because, you know, if you lose it, you still have enough lands. And for Juan's deck, four, three, four mana, it's more than enough. And Lucas dropping here to 14. There is the Mox from Lucas, the only piece of power in his deck, by the way. And attacking here with his 2-2 Mistress Factory, and there we see a Disenchant from Juan. And things are actually looking pretty good now for Juan. Of course, there is that Pendlehaven still. So he cannot really attack next turn. And you can really see the strength here of the Pendlehaven. I mean, Lucas only has a Lanawer Elves and it's keeping two creatures at bay from Juan here. Untapping for turn, drawing a card. Let's see, what can he do? Only two cards in hand. Lucas only one card in hand, I believe. So both players pretty low on cards, kind of running out of fuel here. And there's a Swords on the Lanawer Elves. And this is great news here for Juan, because it means he can start swinging in. So he's probably going to swing in here for four. And let's see if Lucas has something to deal with the factory. It looks like he doesn't. And Lucas is going to go to 12 here after taking the four. No, there is a Terror on the Iron Claw Orc. And that means he's still on 12 because he had to tap two City of Brasses to cast the Terror. And Terror is just a great inclusion for Lucas from the sideboard. And he's now going to flip on the Mishra's Factory here. And very interesting is that both players have simply boarded in. And that is a really nice flip, Lucas. Both players have boarded in um, a lot of creature hate because, you know, they're playing against... You see the hands there. I had to laugh there from Lucas. I mean, flipping in the finals, that's, that's got to be very nerve-wracking. I mean, I've never done it, so I have no experience, but it, it, it must be very nerve-wracking to do that in the finals. And let's see, Juan here looking, playing a Blood Moon. I, I think Blood Moon is a great card for, for, for Juan. And there is a Script Sprites from Lucas. And I already discussed the power, possible power of Blood Moon in this matchup in the deck tech section. I think Blood Moon can be very decisive. And there is an Iron Claw Orcs, because of course Blood Moon stops the Pendlehaven. And remember, Lucas is playing with colors that just don't have a lot of answers to, um, 
to enchantments. So I do know he's got tranquilities in his sideboard. I wonder if he boarded them in because he didn't see Blood Moon in the first two games. There is another Blood Moon here. And let's see. Let's let's check it out now. Um, Juan's on 14. Lucas is on 10. And I think Lucas is in trouble here. Lucas has one card. Juan has one card. There is a Spirit Link. Ooh, this is cheeky. Attacking here and deciding to build on his life total. Moving up to 16 here. And if Lucas can find a Terror for that Iron Claw... On the other hand, he cannot make any black mana anymore. Of course, he cannot play any black spells because of the Blood Moons. Ay, 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 bad news here. At least he has a basic forest. He's got a Kurt Ape that he can play because of the basic forest. It turns into a 2-3. Or, no, it's a Falling Star. Oh, this is so cool. It's a Falling Star. In the finals, we see a Falling Star. Wow, I thought it was a Kurt Ape. It's actually a Falling Star. And uh, Falling Star is just such a cool card. And there is another Blood Moon. There's a little bit too much Blood Moons here for uh, for Juan. I mean, he's still pretty high up. But, I mean, he will go down very quickly. And he needs to find a creature. That's all he really needs. And then he's fine. But if he can't find one, dropping to 13. Lucas just passing turn as well. Let's see what Juan can find here. Playing, smashing down. Ooh, there's a Sarah Angel. This is huge, but a double bolt here from Lucas. Wow, I really thought that an Angel would give Juan the victory here, but there's a double bolt from Lucas. Another script sprites, and all of a sudden, I mean, Lucas needs six turns now. I mean, Juan still has time finding another Iron Claw. That is not too bad. Remember, Lucas is on a lower life total, swinging in here, bringing him to 10. There is a Lanawer Elves. I wonder if he's going to chump block on the Lanawer. And he is attacking now with the 2-2 and using it as a chump, not taking any damage. And that means next turn, both of these players will come to 8. Ooh, there is a Swords. That means Lucas going up to 9, but he's losing his Flyer. And this is an exciting Finals. I mean, both of these players can really get this. Both players on top deck mode. Both players have lost more than half of their lives. Well, Juan has lost half and uh, Lucas has mo lost more being on 9. Is he going to attack? Then Juan will also be on 9. And he's going through his graveyard. So I guess he's got a exactly a regrowth. Casting a regrowth. And I couldn't see what that was. A lightning bolt, I, I believe. And he's attacking now, bringing Juan to 9 life. So both players are on 9. And I believe Lucas has a Lightning Bolt in hand. Attacking now, probably going to play out the Bolt. Or did he choose something else? And Lucas is contemplating, am I going to take the damage? No, he's going to play out the Bolt. And that's, of course, a difficult decision when you're playing with Bolts and you're playing aggro. When to use them on a creature and when to use them on your opponent's life total and there he goes Juan's going to eight here playing another one one so more pressure on the board and things are not looking great for Juan all of a sudden he needs to he just needs to play out creatures here playing a single red for a bolt that means he's on oh he's on six and then he plays a balance what a play here and I was just telling that, you know, it was looking bad for Juan. I mean, Juan, you're completely back in the game, man, with this Lightning Bolt and Balance. Lucas dropping to six here. And after that, Balance losing both of his creatures. And both players have no cards in hand. Game number three. What a game. Whew. The winner is going to take the, take the finals here. Take the Raging Bull Series Cup. Is there actually a cup? I, I don't even know. Anyway, it is the title that counts. And there we see a draw here. Passing turn. And a draw from Lucas. And a draw from Juan. Both players top decking here. Finding another land for Juan. And there is an Emerald Dragonfly. The 1-1 Flyer for 2 green. You can give it first strike. And remember, because of those Blood Moons, the Pendle Havens are simply not working. And there we see a Granite Gargoyle here from Juan. Good news for Juan. I think Lucas needs a Wailuli Wolf right now. 
or a giant grove or something. And playing a disintegrate, is this the winning one? I don't think it's enough, is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he's gonna go down to one life playing a disintegrate for seven? Oh, great. I th maybe I would have waited. Can you let me know in the comments below what you would have done? Would you have waited for another land or would you simply played it out? And there we see um, a spirit link. And does that mean that Juan's gonna attack? He's gonna attack and because of the spirit link, he's gonna deal damage and gain life. This is a perfect scenario here for Juan who will probably get back to three now. So he's attacking, holding the two up. And let's see what's gonna happen here. And I think Lucas really needs some time to think, do I wanna block this attack? I think you don't, to be honest. I mean, if you take two damage, you're down to four, you're not in lightning bolt range yet. I mean, you don't wanna take any damage, of course, but I think it's the best decision at this stage of the game. And, and Juan is still in lightning bolt range now. So, and even if you block, he still gains the life from the spirit link. There is a chain and that's game. Oh, that is game, man. This was such a great and close finals. And we see the applause here from Juan. And this is just, wow, 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 wow. This game, this really could have gone either way. Both players could have won this. Uh, but hey, there's always one winner. And I think this was... Lucas and Juan, thank you for this finals. This was extremely entertaining. Uh, Richard, thank you so much for organizing this. You can actually uh, get in touch with Richard on his Instagram as well. Old school uh, MTG, uh, I believe, underscore NL or something like that. I'll, I'll have I'll have his um, uh, Instagram details in the description below. So if you want to get in touch with him, you can. Also check out his website, RagingBullSeries.com to check out the full match report, a link to all the matches. And of course, you can also check out the Raging Bull playlist right here on Timmy Talks. And I just really, really want to congratulate Lucas Baum. Great magic. I guess you've played fantastic magic today, winning the finals. And also congratulations to the runner-up, Juan, man. You've done very well and you've ignited my love for Iron Claw Orcs again after seeing seeing the Iron Claw doing great work this entire, entire tournament. And actually the same can be said for Lucas Baum and his Artifact Blasts in the semifinals. What a tournament it was. If you want to see all the games back again, you can check the playlist. Um, if you want to support the channel, if you want to support what I do, if you want to support Old School, if you want to support Timmy Talks, uh, you can become a sponsor of the show. You can check us out on Patreon. There's probably a card popping up right now. And what you can also do is you can like this video, subscribe if you're not a sub yet, uh, and you can also leave a comment. Let me know what you think of these finals and the choices that these players made. I think, you know, that disintegrate all the way down to one. That was very nerve wracking. And after that spirit link, I thought, okay, Juan's getting back into this, but it proved to be the right decision from Lucas finding that chain lightning, top decking the chain lightning. Oh man, oh, what a match it was. And before we go, uh, please stick around because I would like to go to the end scroll and show you the fantastic, the amazing, the wonderful superheroes of Timmy Talks, the patrons, of course, let's go. To the end scroll. Ik het als ik het als somba kan zien.